Hello, my name is Dave Johansson and this is Blossom Hill Crafts. Uh, today I'm going to do a short video on how to throw like soup bowls or salad bowls that are the same size and stack. Um, this is our challenge of the month, so if you're a Blossom Hill Crafts student, um, make sure you give these a try. I'm just throwing with a pound and a half, so it's a, it's a small bowl. Uh, like salad size and I want them to be repeatable so I've, I've got a couple of them here that I've already made um, the first step is just to throw a bowl so this is my bowl now after I've got my bowl thrown those of you who know me know that I I'm not real big on rulers I like marking gauges uh, so that's what I've used to make this bowl so my marking gauge is going to be made of a couple of chopsticks and some clay First thing I'm going to do is take a fairly big lump of clay and just put it down on the wheel head. I mean on, on the, the base of the wheel, the table of the wheel here. Um, I'm right handed so I throw here. I want this on the opposite side of the wheel from where I throw. And I'm going to just take a chopstick and stick it right down in that clay. So you know I just got clay on the table and I'm just putting a chopstick in it like that to hold it. And I've got a lot you know so that it's in there real stiff. Um, just like that. If you're throwing with trays, which most of you probably do, I don't, um, you could put this right on your tray too, uh, on your spill pan. Then I'm going to get a smaller piece of clay. I don't want it too heavy. And I'm just going to put it right up there, just like that. And I'm going to take a second uh, chop chopstick and I'm going to put it into the clay just like that. And now I have a marking gauge. Now, if I don't, I hope you can see this. There's a little gap between the edge of my chopstick and the edge of my bowl, and I make that gap the width. Let's see how I did here of of my needle tool. Um, that way, uh, I don't have to throw right to the edge of that chopstick. So now, if I take a pound and a half and I throw the rim out to that point, it will be the same height and the same width. And again, I've got the chopstick off the edge of the bowl the width of uh, the end of my needle tool and that just makes it easier for me to get the bowl off now when I go to take this bowl off I want my bat pins to sort of be uh, on the opposite side of where my chopstick is so that I can kind of pick my bowl up and get it under without knocking that chopstick and I don't usually throw with bat pins, so my bat pins aren't attached. Um, so now I have a marking gauge. That's going to allow me to do some repeat throwing here. Um, I need to get a bat, which I've got right here, and I'm going to put my bat down. And I've got a pound and a half of clay here. Um, I'm going to put it on there, and we're going to just get started here on... Uh, on throwing our bowl. So uh, I'm going to center up just like I would at any other time. And we all are going to go about this different. And there we go. I've got my nice centered piece of clay and drill my hole just like I would at any other time. Now, again, this is. Uh, I guess an aesthetic thing for me, but I when I'm throwing dinnerware, I don't I want to be able to put a nice foot on this. So I'm actually going to leave the bottom a little bit thick. I'm going to leave it more like eh, closer to a half an inch than a quarter inch, and and that's just my aesthetic. But I really do encourage you not to throw your bottoms too thin, especially when you're making like functional dinnerware. The other thing is when I I threw my first bowl, I don't want to get absolutely as much out of the clay as I possibly can. If, if I throw the absolute biggest bowl that I can out of a pound and a half of clay, when I go to repeat throw, if anything goes wrong, then I'm not able to repeat it. So um, I, I'm, I'm not really throwing thick, but I'm also not throwing thin. I'm throwing something that I know I can do the same thing with the same amount of clay. So now I'm going to open, uh, open my cylinder up and compress the bottom. Now, when I threw the first one, I did measure uh, how far I opened the bottom, and I used a caliper. I'm not a huge fan of the caliper, but that's what I used. 
So I need to open this up a little bit further um, so that I do it the same as the other one. Um, and this is the only thing that I'm going to use a caliper for is, uh, is that right there. And to be honest with you, if I'm just throwing these, after I've made the second one, I'm pretty much going to be there every time. Um, so I've compressed my bottom and now I'm going to lift the walls up just like I would at any other time. And I'm headed up towards my marking gauge up here. And I know that I actually need to throw a little bit further, a little bit higher than my marking gauge. So there I am. I'm up there. And now I'm going to start to bring my clay out and up and out. And let's see how I did with regards to my marking gauge here. I can go up just a little bit more. And I'm going to come in and compress my bottom again so I have a nice round bottom. No bump on the edge. And there we go. I've now thrown a repeated bowl. I'm about exactly one uh, needle tool's distance from my marking gauge and these bowls will be the same. So that's all there is to uh, repeat throwing bowls for like salad, but well you could do this with any bowl. Uh, thanks again, I'm Dave Johansson. This is Blossom Hill Crafts and I hope you give this challenge a try. Bye now.